far. How much faith do you have in Boston's ability to actually turn this into a series? Well, it's not over, but I have very little faith. Right now, you're looking at a Boston Celtic team that were number one in the, number one defensively throughout this whole playoffs. And right now, they have lost their defensive identity. Those guys cannot guard a park car right now. Miami Heat are dissecting them every which and way on the defensive end. They're cutting. Bam is getting wide open dunks. I thought he was shacked yesterday. And on the offensive end, they're playing individually. They're not playing team-wise. The Celtics are playing my turn basketball. Okay, Kemba, here go your turn. Take, do your step backs and your crossovers. Okay, I haven't touched the ball. Next is Jason Tatum. Side step, three-point shots. You cannot beat the Miami Heat playing individual basketball on the offensive end. And the Miami Heat has been, in game one, they had 32 assists. Last night, they had 28 assists. And they have been dominating the Celtics in the paint. And the Celtics, keep in mind, they had a 2-0 series lead over the Raptors, and the Raptors still took them to seven games in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Game one of the Western Conference finals is tonight. It's the Lakers and the Nuggets. And you could say that Denver has the momentum because they overcame two 3-1 series, uh, I guess, deficits in their previous two series. So what's it going to be tonight for the Lakers? What's the key for them to jump out to a good start? Well, they just got to be who they who they are, and that's the, the championship-bred team that they are right now. They have the most championship experience in the league, and it's showing. The way that they did the Houston Rockets, I have no concern about the Los Angeles Lakers. The Denver Nuggets haven't faced a team like this, especially with LeBron James being the best player in the world and Anthony Davis being the top five player in the world, the best power forward. And let's not talk about playoff Rondo. He has turned it up another notch. And Alex Caruso, I said this before, he is the heart and soul of that team. Danny Green is finding his stride and finding his rhythm on the offensive end. So is Caldwell Pope. Kyle Kuzma doing things that we haven't seen him do all years, all year on the defensive end and bringing that energy. So the Lakers just have to be themselves. Dwight Howard is probably going to start and they're probably going to go big to match up with Jokic. And with him and Anthony Davis in that front court, they the best front court defensive team, front court defensive duo in the NBA. I just want to say, they need to be themselves, yet the Lakers... Let's show love, because when the Heat went to that zone in the third quarter, Boston's 17-point lead disappeared. Miami got 21 points from Bam Adebayo, but the real number to look at is 26 points off of 20 Celtics turnovers. Heat take game two, 106 to 101. Made the Celtics so mad that they were yelling at each other and throwing things in their own locker room after the loss. Now, in a series of blown leads, maybe even this one isn't even safe, right? Two games to none. But at least traditionally, once the Heat have that advantage in a series, there's no looking back. Miami has a perfect 16-0 record in any playoff series when taking a 2-0 lead all time, including a 2-0 mark in, in, in these playoffs. With their win Thursday, the Heat are also now 5-0 as underdogs this postseason. In the Battle of Ohio and first overall picks, give the win to the Browns and Baker Cleveland over the Bengals with Joe Burrow, 35-30. A couple of things here. Maybe the Bengals should invest in their O-line. I'm not sure you want Joe Burrow getting hit that much. Also, Baker maybe had a chip on his shoulder. And Nick Chubb is a beast. 124 yards and two rushing touchdowns. Joe Burrow did actually throw the ball more than he got hit. 37 completions, the most in a game by a rookie in NFL history. His 61 pass attempts, second most all time by a rookie quarterback. Of note, Burrow has thrown the ball 97 times this season. He's only been picked once. Great week for football in the Buckeye State, especially after word from one Buckeye in particular. Sean Wade is opting back in for 2020. Number seven on Mel Kuyper's prospects list. The cornerback said on September 14th that he was opting out to get ready for the NFL draft. But now that the Big Ten is playing, Wade says he will too. So, pilot. Come back and be a Buckeye and really go strive for this national championship like I was back in January when I came back and then into the draft now. So. Back in January, I didn't go to the draft, and my goal was to come back, be a captain, get my degree, and now they did cancel football, now it's back. So it, since it's back, we got a chance to win the national championship, and that's been my goal since, since, the, since day one. So that's what we're striving for, and that's what we're going to strive for when we get back in October. So. Okay, now I get to tell funnies. Pilots flying near Yankee Stadium should keep an eye out for UFOs, but in this case, the flying objects would be identifiable as baseballs. 
See, New York had 19 homers in their last three games, all of them against the Blue Jays. That's a major league record. Five homers in the fourth inning, which ties another major league record. The 19 round trippers equating to 7,496 feet, nearly a mile and a half. Ten days left in the baseball season. You can count both the White Sox and the Rays in for the postseason. Chicago is the first American League team in after their win over the Twins. It also snaps an 11-season drought for the Southsiders. The Rays got in with a doubleheader sweep of the Orioles. Half game back of the White Sox for the best record in the AL. I don't think we're talking enough about how Naomi Osaka won the U.S. Open on a bad hamstring. And now, though, she won't do it in the French Open. Osaka saying she's out of the next Grand Slam on the tennis calendar, saying the left hamstring injury and a lack of prep time on clay courts will keep her from the event in Paris, which begins September 27th. She didn't see it coming, despite a season in which Asia Wilson, the number one pick three years ago, averaged north of 20 points per game, more than eight rebounds per game, and two blocks per game for the Aces. She did not see the MVP award coming. I wouldn't be this without you guys. Like, you got it. So, so many people doubted us. It wasn't in conversations, and we did it. Like, it, of course, the job's not done, but we put a lot of people on notice saying, I wouldn't be this. I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for the ACES organization. If it wasn't for the W, like, I'm truly grateful. I'm blessed. Uh, I'm just so glad to have y'all as my teammates, all my road dogs for real. The Aces are the number one seed in the Wubble, and Asia said that even as she was listening to all of her stats being read out loud, she still didn't realize that she was going to be named MVP. Well, they're going to take on the Sun in the semifinals. Yep. So like she said, the, the job is not done, but congratulations to her. Those are your half-hour headlines, and as the WNBA playoffs continue, so do the NBA playoffs. Or it's, it's not exactly going well for Boston. Got downhill, couldn't punch it, but I'm just getting out of here. You get on that big stage, you just got to make big plays. That's all it is. He made a good play. Just get ready for game two. Kemba Walker doing a little bit of everything. The Celtics looking sharp here in the first half. The Miami Heat have regained the lead after trailing by 17. Dragons a three-pointer. Bang! Tatum goes in a corner.